We have a quorum. Call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Next on the agenda is approval of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes. We'll do those individually. Do I have a motion to approve the first set of minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes from the work study. Motion in the second. Please call the roll. Greg Van Leer. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Chris Gerald. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. Motion's been passed four to five to one. Thank you. And Lair again, we didn't have his microphone on. Greg Van Lair. Oh, I, you got <laughs> who didn't have any audio on. I have no idea what you guys just did. We're, we're passing okay. the minutes, sir. Uh, then I, I, I approve. We still have five to one. Five zero. Oh, only five zero. Uh, no, five. Uh, well, it's now he's added his, so we got five, five to zero. Motion's been passed. I move that we uh, approve the minutes of the meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Uh, call the roll. Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Chris Gerald. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. Motion's been approved five to one. Thank you. Public comment. I've had no request for public comment tonight. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> First uh, on the agenda is Resolution 17-2021, Electronic Meeting Participation, Town Manager. Then I'd like to defer to our legal counsel at this time. Uh, we had enacted or we had put this on the agenda because we had uh, thought that the governor was not going to uh, reissue his uh, emergency orders, but he has, so I'm going to turn this over to our attorney. Yeah, so the governor has extended the emergency declaration for another month, so his the electronic meetings can still apply. When we created this resolution, uh, we wanted to make it very streamlined um, because we want to get it in place to allow uh, for Mr. Van Leer to participate in this meeting as well. We don't need to do that now because of the governor's extension. There are four items that the council can consider um, adding to the resolution, and that's what we wanted to kind of have you guys think about uh, going forward. Um, we can add into the resolution um, that there is a limit on the number of times annually that you have the electronic meeting. You can add that or you can choose not to add it. doesn't matter. Um, there's a limit that you can put as to the members of the council members who can participate electronically if you want to. Um, then the other two issues are uh, one of them is going to be that the individual or any individuals who are planning to participate um, by electronic means has to notify the town council president x number of days prior to the meeting so that planning can be made if you want to add language like that um, and then finally you can apply it to uh, committees that are appointed by the council so that means any committee that is made up of only appoint of the town council uh, you can this electronic meeting resolution can apply to that does not come apply to other boards that you don't hold all of the appointed positions for so that would include the park board which has an appointee from the school um, redevelopment commission which has an appointee from the school um, can't, there's probably another one somewhere. I'd have to look through our boards and make sure that I've got them all. We don't have any. They're not all appointed. appointed by the council or the council president. And so the things to consider is, you know, from our perspective, it really doesn't make us, if you're going to have the electronic meeting availability, um, the first two categories of there of limiting the uh, number of times that it can be utilized annually. I, I don't see a huge advantage to that 
because then how are you going to sign? So Mr. Winters uses one. Mr. Van Leer uses one. Nancy now wants to exercise it, but she can't because those two have used it. it, it the application is not fair uniform across the board to accommodate for people who have different vacations or leaves that they have to uh, go on. Additionally, uh, limiting the number of council members who can uh, participate is a little bit troublesome in case we have a situation like we had, again, with COVID or something like that, which doesn't allow you all to be here. And you can't foresee that. It, Maybe you say at least one member must be at the town hall or the meeting place, something of that nature, but not to limit it to just two people can take advantage of it or, or something of that sort, if that makes sense. The other two make complete sense to me. Um, it only makes sense that if somebody's going to use it, they give the town council president notice in advance. Um, that allows for the staff to get everything set up uh, to facilitate it. And then having it apply to all of the boards that you guys appoint only makes sense as well. Okay, thank you. Any comments from the councilman? Mark, did you have some? So yeah, if 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 you're ready to take a look at this tonight, uh, we could probably do this pretty quickly, and then that way um, uh, our legal counsel can make amendments to that resolution, and we can have it back at our next meeting because I do believe we'd like to get this passed before June 30th. Right, because it looks like this will be the, I know we said this last time, but it looks like this is going to be the last executive order right. um, unless there's a huge spike. So I guess the first question would be uh, the council's feeling of limiting the number of meetings that at least electronic participation can be utilized. Uh, council's advising he doesn't think we should limit it. So it's your guys. Yeah, that call. doesn't make sense to me to limit that. I agree. And the next question will be limiting the number of members that can take advantage at one time. Um, again, like he said, if we have another pandemic, which you know, I pray we don't, but having the ability to meet all virtual is a good backup step to have i think or a back plan you know plan to have just my opinion and one just asking the president and then if they can go yeah, electronically yeah that would be our next one I, I right now i just need to know if you you guys want to restrict the number of people that can at one time not be here or do you want to just leave it open in case we have another situation i think it defeats the purpose to uh limit the number of participants because of you know kind of what we experienced last year so yeah i think it should be open well i always have an opinion uh, uh obviously a pandemic aside because that always changes the game you know if we have to do something remote i, I guess my my personal opinion is you know we we ran to serve in this seat and two meetings a month is not that big of a deal and outside of uh outside of, uh, you know, extenuating circumstances or even a vacation here or there, uh, I, I think we need to be in our seats. And that's just, we, we ran to serve the people and that's where we need to be. Um, if it is going to pass though, um, I would prefer to, to now you said it isn't a good idea, but I would prefer to limit it um, to maybe, you know, four times a year per council member. But I, I don't know if, if, you know, something along those lines so that we don't have an empty house all the time, you know, we, we like the participation from, you know, the, uh, the, the crowd, uh, even, even if they're saying things we don't necessarily agree with, it's, it's good to have that. And if, you know, I think if there's a serious topic that needs to be discussed and we all decide we want to do it remotely so we don't have to face the crowd, that's not a good thing. Now it's an extreme situation. Obviously nobody's going to do that, but I don't know. I just, I just, I guess I'm old fashioned, you know, so. Yeah, we could put limiting language like that saying that, the availability to participate in an electronic meeting is limited to four times annually per council member. And then if they can't be present, then they're just absent for that right. meeting on the fifth one. And, and so that goes. Uh, and, and one other thought, you said a minimum amount of people here. You know, it was minor, but at the very beginning, he couldn't hear us. So what if there's two people here and three people, we lose communication. 
well, then we have to stop the meeting because we no longer have a quorum. You would not have a quorum, correct. So maybe if we are going to do this, we limit it to a number of times per year and a minimum of three people here. That way, if there's an issue, you know, we can at least have a quorum or something along those lines. It's, it's really your guys' decision, yeah. uh, whatever well, you want to do. Then let's leave it the way it is. <laughs> Already. I, I, I don't have a vote, sir. <laughs> so with, with uh, like, in my case, uh, my situation, I, I sit on numerous, you know, other uh, appointed boards. Um, you know, if we limited to four, uh, would that be per, I'm going to say, incident or or just total? Because, uh, you know, in, in a week's time, it's possible for me to have three meetings, um, you know, and, and that would, uh, I, I'm not saying that we should do it just for me or anything like that, but. I'm just saying it's maybe maybe some leniency, you know, on the numbers, you know, or or four per uh, per, you know, whether it's council, plan commission, RDC, you know, those types of things. I may even recommend six. Yes. Thoughts? I, just some thoughts. That I, have. I I can see both sides of this. I understand what you're saying, but I understand what he's saying. We've had been through a pandemic. We went for how many months without even seeing each other? It's all electronic. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think we need to change it the way it is. I mean, we were elected to be here and be in front of the people. I see, I see both sides. Um, I think that it is nice to be able to have Greg sit in on these when he's not here. But. I, I feel like I represent the people, whether or not I'm, right. I'm present of course or not. You, of I'm, course, I'm of present course. physically right here, right now. So, I and agree. I'm not arguing one way or another. But you know, I, I know that there's been cases where we've all have not been able to make a meeting. But even uh, digitally, uh, I think it shows us an extra effort to uh, to participate instead of just bailing on the meeting completely. In the past, people just missed because they were in Florida or whatever. Yeah, but now that we have the option of tuning in by video, I think it's a good thing that we should continue to do that. And I don't, I don't know if there's anything really that needs to be changed. Change with the ordinance, or change with the resolution, or change at all. Change. So you're saying you're saying we should allow for the participation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which would have to happen through this resolution. Correct. Correct. If, after after June thirtieth, yeah. th this won't be allowed if we don't pass our own resolution. Well, again, I think I think we should be here. That's what we ran for. But if we are going to do it, I think it needs to be limited. And I don't think any of us on here would be gone half the year. But we need to make sure people aren't going to have the year. I mean, be here. Yeah. And I, I think, and it, Jewel, correct me if I'm wrong, we're only dealing at this point with council attendance. So, and what with what Mr. Van Leer is saying, it's it's for council meetings that that would be that this would be affected by. Correct. And it, I would say that if you expanded this to um, the, all the committees appointed by the town council. That it would be a separate incident per committee, because um, I mean the, the example would be that in one week you have four separate meetings for different committees. If you don't have it that way, then it ex takes away each one of those. I mean, but again, this is all up to um, the council for consideration. So, okay, what I'm looking at is a motion either. To pass this as it is, or a motion with some uh, extra thoughts on it, like uh, I make a motion to uh, pass this, but only for four events, or anything you think. So, if any of you councilmen want to make a motion, so as this is, there's no limitation on how many times you can be absent. Correct. As it is written right okay. now, somebody can attend every single council meeting electronically if they would want to. Okay. Um, and so. I think that absolutely needs to be changed. 
and it, to change it, you don't necessarily need to take action. We can just kind of take it as a general consensus of, yeah, we want to have something for a limiting factor. We want to have something for the total number of people, people who can be here. Right. Um, and then we can create the resolution that includes the language that is easily modifiable depending upon the discussion at the next council meeting um, to you know, amend it on the floor and then pass it at that time if you want to, but we have the crux of the language in there. So I don't think, if you're wanting to make changes to the resolution in front of you today, you don't have to take any official action. Okay. I feel that's what's gonna happen. So we have a general consensus to... Uh, we so have to determine how many times and how many people, right? If I can summarize what I've heard from all of you, um, you no more than four meetings electronically per year per council member. You'd like to have a quorum here at all times, three people minimum here in the building. Um, you do want notification made to council president if you're going to be utilizing the electronic participation. And then the last question is, do you want to extend this courtesy to the other boards other than the ones that I've, and I'll give list, a jewel a list of what uh, is going to be prohibited. I do know, like I said, park board and RDC will not be allowed to use this. I think we almost have the resolution right there. What, what, of course, one sir. point of clarification. Uh, if, as I say, someone maxes out there four times, they can still listen to the meeting if they want. They, they can, can listen. participate in the conversation. They just can't take a vote. They, they cannot take official action. Okay. So they, can, they do not count towards a quorum. Okay. Um, and so that's where it would get a little bit tricky is let's say you have an ordinance that you want uh, to consider on first reading is just doing the math on that one all if one person's not here then all four who are here have to vote in favor of it and then in order to get the two-thirds majority it's so, just a math thing. so let me ask one more question uh, the governor's order expires assuming june 30th so we go back to the old way basically at that point which does require participation things Perfect. like that that would a resolution like this run afoul to state statute in that regard? No, this is a specific authority that was given by the legislature this past year gotcha. okay. to implement the ability to take advantage of the electronic meeting. Okay. So maybe we could go with a motion that follows what Mark said, and then it'll be done. Well, I, I, I don't want my recommendation not to do that because we don't have the concrete language within this document itself. And so right, I would we'll like general consensus. We'll put it on the table and come back and vote on it. Yeah. Okay. Everybody and I. Thank you. You're welcome. B. Wishes to be heard. Insurance representative, Mr. Hill. I guess we won't be seeing you anymore. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm going to do. All my meetings remotely, if that's okay, if this passes, can we get me in that? Um, so I met with Mark last week. I think most of you know um, I've accepted a, a position with a different insurance organization uh, that is not an insurance agent. So I can't represent Danville. I'm not going to another place where I could rep represent Danville. I'm going to a place that calls on agents that would represent the town of Danville. So good opportunity for me and my wife. I hate to leave you and all the other clients that I have, but... Um, have to do what's right for me and my family. So with that said, I'd like to introduce you to Bill Whalen, who's in our Crawfordsville office, uh, well, my former Crawfordsville office, uh, for longer than I have been, uh, insures towns and municipalities already, uh, and is going to become your new representative. So before he has to come in front of you with business, I wanted you to get a face with a name and uh, let him introduce himself. Hi. Um, Hello. Bill, Bill Whalen. I am... Uh, lifelong resident of Montgomery County. Um, been married to my wife, Loretta, for 32 years. She is a high school special education teacher, getting ready to start her 39th year. I've been in the insurance business for 13 years, and as Kevin said, I do have other municipalities, so I am, I am familiar with insuring municipalities. Um, besides insurance, I am the ladies and men's golf coach at Southmont High School, so I'm not good. Those who can play, play. Those who can't, coach. So that's why I coach golf. Um, but I look forward to working with you. And I will pass out my card to each of you if that's okay tonight. And if you have any issues or concerns, please get a hold of me and we will get them taken care of. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet all of you. So last thing, so the only thing that still has to renew this year is the workers' comp. So Bill will be back with that shortly. That renews in July. And then my last parting thing, which I was going to do a couple of meetings ago, but you guys kind of had all your time taken up with that, what was going on. I, uh, I want to pass out a compliment to your department heads. So we moved to Astra Insurance last year, and they sent a loss control representative out to uh, thoroughly look at every single operation. He met with Matt. He met with Jerry, who's now gone. I'm sorry, Jerry's not to hear this. He met with Jim. He met with Rob. He met, met with Will. After every single meeting, he told me he wished every town was like this. There were zero recommend. I mean, I can't say there were zero recommendations. There were a couple little Hector the Inspector uh, marks. But your department heads are doing a great job, not just in running their department, but running it safely and helping to protect the town. So I want to leave with that Thank compliment you. for them. So. Well, Kevin, we've appreciated your professional approach. and. I wish you good luck in your new job. Thank you. Hopefully you'll still be scooping ice cream. <laughs> You're not moving, uh, are you? I'll, I'll be entering the receipts into QuickBooks. Gotcha. I will not be scooping ice cream. <laughs> oh, good CPA. Thank you. All right. Resolution 11, 2021, fiscal plan, 589 South CR 75 West. Good evening. Um, resolution 11 is the fiscal plan for uh, property at 589 South County Road 75 West. Uh, this, is, this did hold, there was a public hearing last month on the ordinance and uh, you can open up the public hearing for the fiscal plan tonight. One other thing I might add, there is no physical negative impacts by annexing this property based on what the fiscal study says. <clears throat> Mr. President, this will require you to gavel open a public hearing for the fiscal uh, resolution. All right. meeting and open the other public hearing do we have any comments okay thank you you'll need to gavel it close sir Whatever. pardon you'll you have to gavel close closed yes sir public thank hearing closed thank you you're welcome do I have a motion to approve this I move that we approve Resolution 11, 2021, annexation um, on, on County Road 75 South in Danville. It's actually for the fiscal plan. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, for the fiscal plan for the 75 West. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Courtney, please take the vote. Greg Van Lair. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Chris Gerald. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. The motion's been passed five to zero. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then the next item is ordinance number nine, which is the ordinance that actually adopts this property or 
uh, add, it actually annexes this property into the town of Danville, um, and it is up for approval or adoption. Any comments from the women? I make a motion to approve ordinance 9 2021. Second. Motion is second. Take the roll, please. Greg Van Lair. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Chris Gerald. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. Motion has been fast, five to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, E, Ordinance 13, 2021, established, establishment of the ARP fund, Mark. President, uh, council members, this comes before you for adoption tonight. It was uh, um, first uh, introduced on May the 19th. This ordinance allows the clerk treasurer to actually accept funds from the American Rescue Plan Act uh, of 2021. This uh, as I, we've told the council, uh, we're in line over the next two years for $2.1 million in um, recovery money, and we can't receive a dime of it without this. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any comment from the council? Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 13 2021 establishment of the ARP fund. Second? Second. A motion to second. Please take the roll. Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. <coughs> Chris Gerald. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. Motion's been passed five to zero. Thank you. Okay, Ordinance 15, 2021, Off-Road Vehicles, Town Manager. This is up for introduction tonight. Um, in speaking with staff at our last count, uh, department head meeting, um, we know there are some concerns. Uh, several of the staff believe these are actually somewhat more safe than golf carts because uh, there's more regulations on these. They have... Um, better seat belt systems, uh, roll cages, things like that. So um, it's, I know it's been a topic of discussion amongst the council members themselves. Uh, that's why it's up for introduction tonight. One thing we would like to possibly um, look at changing is under uh, additional regulations, should be on page three, Will. Under there you go right there. So item A says, no permitted off-road vehicle shall be occupied by more persons than for which the off-road vehicle was designed. Um, then it says each occupant shall have and use a separate seat. Uh, in the last two weeks, um, we, we were talking with some of the citizens who brought up the fact that golf carts have aftermarket back seats. And so the question was, is there such a thing for uh, the off-road vehicles, as it turns out, there is. Um, Kubota makes uh, an aftermarket. I don't know if they make it, but 
There's an aftermarket rumble seat that actually goes into the bed of the truck. Uh, interestingly enough, because I was kind of concerned about the bed of the truck still having tilt abilities, uh, but when this thing is put in, it actually, I guess it deactivates somehow the tilting uh, or the dumping mechanism. The seat actually has seat belts. So I don't, if we pass this, I don't want to limit someone's ability to put in these rumble seats and, and carry four passengers like we do with golf carts. So if this, if this is um, acceptable to you all, I'd like to have that amended in this ordinance uh, if you still want to move forward with it. Like I said, this is up for introduction only. But isn't that how that off-road vehicle was designed for a rumble seat? Or is that totally... It, it is, if, but it's aftermarket. So it wasn't built for the four seats. We, we have, we've debated this for a couple of days now, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we've tried to figure out. So we thought maybe the best thing was is to just say each occupant shall have, use a separate seat. That might be a little bit clearer. Does that sound right, Jewel? Instead of saying it, it had to be manufactured one way. And so. Can you just remove was designed and put has seats? Yes, I and think that, that's probably what we're looking at. That last line would also say as long as you have a seat. Right. Yeah, I mean, that that's an easy change that can be made or a tweak, but this is just set for introduction again. Okay. So uh, this is first reading of this ordinance. And if I understand, we can make corrections and still adopt at the second read. Okay. Any comments? I'd like to make one. When we did the golf buggies, we did a lot of work on that. I called around. I talked to uh, the biggest user of golf buggies is the village down in Florida, 120,000 people. And we argued about seat belts versus no seat belts. And they do not require seat belts. They don't. Uh, push to have seat belts because especially the electric golf carts are heavy and if they roll over then they sit on top of you and kill you that way. I think the only deaths they had were two and that was from drunks falling out of the golf carts. That's 120,000 golf carts. So um, I viewed them as a pretty good science I guess you could say. So then, in looking forward, at, uh, I was very much against the um, razors. Uh, they're very fast, and, and um, that. they're caged in completely with seat belts, and they don't have a, I don't know how much the batteries weigh, 1,000 pounds of batteries underneath them, and would not choke the people. The thing we would have to rely on in those particular vehicles is that they are a sporty thing, and they, people like to drive them fast, but... You can take my truck and drive down Tennessee Street 150 miles an hour just as easy. So if they're licensed and they're governed by the police and, and that, then okay. They just have to follow the law. So my view went back and forth, and I, I feel very positive about them now. And thank you to your homework that you guys have done. So it's the first reading. Requires no further All action. Right. Um. What about the speed limit signs? You know, the, if there the, is a separate speed limit for the no, we, they'll they'll have to abide by our current uh, speed limits that are set forth in the town. Okay. That was one of the things that we had discussed whether or not you want to enact a separate ordinance uh, applying a different speed limit for these, and the decision was, or the consensus was. No, let's leave it as to obey all traffic rules and regulations and, and go about it that way. Some of these vehicles can't even get to the posted speed limit. Those that can have to stay at it or below, and it's okay. up to for the police to enforce. It's a little bit more on the motorcycle. You can go down the street, and you don't have any protection at all when the car hits you. At least this has a little bit of a cage. So that's all. All right, in red, ordinance 15, 2021, nope, ordinance 16, 2021, uh, disposal of equipment, town yeah. manager. Resolution 16, 2021 is disposal of equipment. Clerk <laughs> Treasurer's office contacted me, um, referenced um, some equipment that had been sitting in a storage room um, 
within the confines of their office area and uh, she wanted to get them out of there so uh, we prepared this resolution uh, to dispose of this equipment any comments from the board it tells you how old some of this stuff is uh, um, I don't know when the last time we used a fax modem so um, <laughs> it's pretty antiquated stuff and the radio scanner uh, that's probably I would imagine VHS isn't it Rob or VHF and so uh, they've been operating on an 800 megahertz system for years that thing wouldn't even have picked anything up so okay do I have a motion to approve I make a motion, make a motion to approve resolution 16-2021 to uh, declare that equipment worthless second a motion is second Courtney please take the vote Greg Van Lair aye Nancy Levitt aye Chris Gerald aye David Winters aye Tom Pato aye motion's been passed five to zero thank you very much Okay, next is Ordinance 16 2021, Town Planner. Yes, uh, Ordinance 16 is for introduction only. It is uh, for annexation of approximately 138 acres um, east of Danville, uh, adjacent to County Road 300 East and 100 North. Um, basically, is an extension of uh, the Kensington <coughs> development. Um, and like I said, is it, it is just for introduction this month. We take any comments? Just introduce it and go away. Yep. <laughs> okay. Introduce it. Thank you. Okay. And then ordinance number 19 is for um, annexation at 306 Lawton Avenue. This is a property that is uh, owned. There's there actually two separate parcels owned by the same um, property owner. Uh, one parcel is in the county and one's in the town. So this is just going to take care of that parcel that's in the county and exit into the town. Um, and it is uh, up for adoption. Or I'm sorry, it is up for introduction only. <clears throat> Thank you. Next on the list is capital expenditure request. Best well. Good evening, Council, President. Um, coming to you tonight with hopefully some good news. Um, the uh, property that's south of CVS, Tharp Investments, have granted us permission to drill test wells on that property in the floodplain. Back to test well season, I guess. I was working on uh, the property on the uh, west side of the creek, <coughs> more on residential property. I wasn't getting anywhere, getting into the property to do so. So I looked at the empty lot south of CVS and checked into who owns it, and uh, they granted us permission to drill a test well on there. So that's what this capital expenditure request is for this evening. Do we ever do seismic looking for this water? Seismic? Seismic. Uh, when we drill for oil, uh, we go out in the ocean and put a lot of noise in it, and then it comes up as a pitcher, and you can see the levels underneath the earth where there's rock, there's pockets of oil, pockets of some other liquid. Yes, they sample the soil as they're once Pardon they get, they sample the soil as they're going to know what kind of formation we have if it's the same as. But we don't run over the ground with some kind of electronic device and. No, enforcing with water, it's not that way. You just. Pound that that would find your water pretty easy. I. I'm not a geophysicist, Mr. President, but I believe the viscosity of water is a little bit different than the viscosity of oil. And therefore, the oil will be picked up on that seismic um, return better than water might be. It doesn't matter. The sound travels through the rocks at different speeds, 
and when it echoes off the rock, it comes up at a different time. Right. And that's what gives you your picture, and it doesn't matter Oops. if it's water or oil. Okay. Mr. And President. Some oil wells are almost all water. Yes, sir. And anyways, we won't go into oil. So the, the bigger issue with it um, and the why you drill the test wells is there may be water there, but you don't know the flow and the output of the water there. When you're looking for oil, you're looking for pockets of oil, and you're going to take it no matter what it is kind of situation. A, a test well for water purposes, you have to know the flow and amount of water coming into that location um, to determine whether or not it is a ample supply for the for what you need. So that's the difference of why you can't just do the seismic test because you can't measure the exact flow uh, of the water itself. It's the same in the oil industry. We say that looks like a pocket, then we have to drill into it to see if it has any flow or not. Yeah, but you're happy if you get any oil, <laughs> right? You, you get oil, you can sell it. With water, You, if you're going to invest in getting that in there, you need to know how much that output is, if it can sustain sure. the, uh, the uses you need. I agree completely, but we seem to be just going, well, let's drill over here. Mm, yeah, it's kind let's of... Let's drill over here. In order to get a, the 1,000 gallons a minute we're looking for, we need about 20-plus of formation of heavy gravel. Um, Water doesn't pass through sand very fast, clay, or, or fine gravel. The, the bigger the rocks you get, we always find water, but it won't ever yield what we're looking for. Okay. So you always find water? Yeah, we always hit water. Just It may be enough water for a residential house, but not 1,000 gallons a minute. Okay. Mark, I have a, I have a question. Uh, I didn't see signatures on this. I assume that we're okay with the... And for, unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to get signatures prior to tonight's meeting, but we'll get them. Okay. But Matt has it when he turns it in. Okay. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve this well? I'll make a motion to approve the capital expense request for the test well. I second. Motion is second. Courtney? Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt, aye. Chris Gerald, aye. David Winters, aye. Tom Pato. Aye. The motion's been passed, five to zero. Thank you very much. Go drill your well. Thank you, Council. If you strike oil, the town will love you. <laughs> then we won't have to pay for anything. I don't know oil. I just know what. Build a super highway through the town. I know they don't mix well. <laughs> I would like to compliment uh, Superintendent Ellison um, for thinking outside the box. Uh, He'd ran into several dead ends, um, and uh, um, through his keen observation, he saw um, topography that he felt would match uh, what we're looking for, and uh, he, he really did a good job going uh, across the creek and looking for that. So good job, Matt. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. <clears throat> okay. Um, there's nothing else? Mark, you want to give us a little synopsis of the town? Sure. The uh, Parks Department uh, got the pool open this last weekend. Uh, it was, uh, as in Ma uh, Will's words, a soft opening because <laughs> there weren't many people there. Um, been doing some training, obviously. Um, it's going to be straightening the flagpoles out at Jack Willard Park. We're not sure how they got um, off kilter, but they've been that way uh, ever since I can remember. And they're gearing up for park program next week. Uh, water department's getting ready for their monthly report. Uh, they're doing some well drawdowns. Um, I assigned them an intern this week uh, to work with them. Uh, they've been reading meters, and uh, he was addressing a leak uh, at North Elementary um, as of yesterday. Public works, uh, they've been busy putting the flags up around the square, around through town, doing some crack sealing patches, watering flowers. Um, we're going to be looking at some uh, different trash can lids for downtown. Um, we're finding that um, we're going to try and draw more attention to the recycle side of the trash. So we'll see if we can get that taken care of. And then they've been doing uh, painting of curbs and, and parking lines. I'm sure you've seen it around town. It looks very nice. Uh, wastewater, uh, doing some roof repair, working on a fence in Woodfield. Uh, they've been doing their lift station checks. Uh, a wet test, um, WETT -T test, 
uh, and then they've been doing an oil change in the digester compressors, and I don't even know what that is, but Tony impressed me when he was talking about it. I'm like, that sounds pretty cool. I don't know what it does. But um, Police Department um, Reserve Officer Kaler is off of field training program. He's now on his own. Two reserves are still in training, and uh, as it never fails, as you order new vehicles, um, the old ones start breaking down almost instantaneously. I think they know their lifespan is about to be over. Uh, so he lost two vehicles uh, over the last week. Uh, administration, um, Malin went to another grant school this week, or last week. Um, we uh, got the camera repaired in town hall here in the building so that we can um, see the audience, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the one that was broke. And she's been working with water, wastewater, and stormwater uh, to try and find some grant money for the projects that we have coming up. Fire department had 40 runs last week. They're at 807 for the year. They're up from 170 runs from last year. And uh, if you see them out in Commerce Park, they're doing some drive, dive training this week. Uh, planning department's been getting ready for uh, design review, um, re redevelopment. Um, the TAC committee, that's a meeting that they have when people come in and want to um, approach us about whether it be subdivisions, building, or whatever. She has the department heads come in and meet with them so they can hear what they're requesting and they can return specifications to them. She's been working on some sign permits and addressing in GIS. Stormwater, uh, they finished a stormwater project on Wilson Street, started another drainage project on Hickory Court. They've been working with Banning Engineering uh, to get plans for a drainage issue at 400 East of Maine. Uh, they're submitting some grant applications to help pay for the cost. Uh, he's doing his final inspection on Starbucks tomorrow. Uh, he's completed over 200 inspections on developments and building inspections for the month of May. And he has an, uh, the upcoming projects on East Main and Commerce Park that you approved last year will start soon. Uh, that was through some TIF money. Also, as a reminder, uh, we do have a, another work study next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, it's a budget workshop uh, called by the clerk treasurer. That's all I have. Um, today there was somebody supposed to go into Indianapolis about the wonderful people are going to give us a lot of money for a bypass. And what did they, did you know of that? I, I went to the uh, Indianapolis Metropolitan Planning Organization meeting tonight. Um, they have um, they have an interesting process to apply for uh, the grant. So, um, the uh, executive director was kind enough to let me know that she will come out and meet with us and help us uh, become project ready so that uh, we may have a better chance of uh, being granted one of their grants. What kind of monies are available with those grants? Uh, Up to what? I'll have to... I know Jewel sits on that committee, so uh, and we, I think our roundabout was paid for mostly out of that, by that organization. That something. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of money in the Indianapolis Metropolitan um, Planning Organization is, is enormous. It's huge dollars that you're looking at. The requirement that you always have is they look at the need for the communities, but also essentially shovel readiness. So. If you have uh, a plan, you have land act or mattress, things of that nature, you have a project that is almost ready to go, those are the projects that they look at uh, funding the most because they want to see the return on that investment as soon as possible. They got to get that money out and then into roads so that they can get more money in. Uh, but I... I I would say that Danville would be hard pressed to come up with a project that would uh, stress the financial ability for them to fund. It's just whether and where you fall in the range um, for that. And so it's important that Mark attend those meetings um, because they do consider uh, participation in your MPO. Every MPO across the state, across the country does that. If you participate in the MPO, if you're there, you're part of the planning process itself. Uh, they do take that into consideration. But you have to be mindful that in this area, in the donut counties, you are competing against 
everybody else in those donut counties. That includes Hamilton County. That includes Johnson County, um, Hancock County. All of these other entities that are part of that MPO as well, let alone Indianapolis. Um, so there's a lot of competition for the funds there. Um, okay. Mark, didn't the NDOT come and talk to us a couple months ago? The director came out during the pandemic uh, to make sure that was still wanting to be a viable part of the organization, and I assured her that we were. And they approached us. That's correct. Yeah. Which is a good sign. I think so. Yeah, and like I said, she's going to come back out and, um, you know, uh, as you may or may not know, Will has put together a, uh, a traffic study committee and uh, to look at different projects, I guess, for to deal with our traffic situation. And uh, so we're hoping maybe we can incorporate everything all at one time. And um, if you've ever worked with Will, Will moves fast. And uh, so I'm sure he's going to have some ideas put together pretty quickly. Okay, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. All right, any other comments around the house here? Uh, I was going to comment on that. I, we, we did have our first meeting for the traffic study committee, and uh, it was interesting to see all the, the thoughts out there and the, the ideas. Well, we have like 20 on the list, something like that. So I, I'm excited to see what we can come up with to bring some resolution to the traffic questions in town. Um, other than that, I don't have any other comments. Nancy? I don't have any comments except to talk about the traffic um, uh, committee meeting that there's really some great ideas and I think that we've got a council right now that's ready to take action on some of these ideas because I know you know having lived here all my life that these ideas have been around for a while I mean not not all of them there are some new but you know I I'm just eager to see things happen I'm going to keep it a little off the traffic comments. Uh, unless you heard some traffic around the square last night yeah, at 8.30. Up. Thank you. Um, that mm -hmm. was the softball team coming from their regional win at Tri-West. So we had to semi-state this weekend at Brown County. So congratulations, Sorry. softball team. Sure. So um, uh, I was unable to attend the... Uh, Jerry Crisp's uh, going away party, so I uh, made a special trip down to see him. And him and I had a great, uh, great long talk, and and uh, spent a lot of time thanking him for his years of service for uh, the town of Danville. Um, and then <clears throat> tomorrow, I am having a meeting with a, to uh, discuss blighted and or foreclosed properties around Danville. So I'll keep you posted on the uh, outcome of that meeting. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, everybody's made a comment. And claim dockets. Do I have a Move motion? to approve the claim docket. Second. Motion is second. Everybody in favor generally? Yes, aye. aye. Okay, claim dockets approved. And the motion we're looking for is. Second. The motion is second. Everybody approve? Aye. Meetings closed. Thank you for coming, everybody. I got a couple more.